Good afternoon. Uh, it's fantastic to see you. And uh, as Stephen said, we are continuing our series today in the book of Jonah. Uh, I'd really recommend Stephen's talk last week who kicked off uh, looking at Jonah chapter one. And by way of a very, very quick recap, uh, Jonah has been called by God uh, to go and preach, speak to the great city of Nineveh. But rather than going along, he decides to run away and he goes in completely the opposite direction. He ignores God's call, turns his back on him and he finds himself on a ship trying to aid and escape away from God. Good luck to that. But this storm rises up uh, and he's thrown into the depths of the ocean with seemingly no hope of rescue, no hope of a second chance. And uh, that's where we pick up the series today. We are at the end of chapter one in verse 17 and then into chapter two. Now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, in my distress, I called to the Lord and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas and the current swelled about me. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. I said I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you, Lord my God, brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will make good. I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. What do you do when you are feeling far away from God? In those times where God maybe feels a million miles away. I think at different times in our lives and particularly in our faith, it's not unusual for lots and lots of different reasons, different circumstances, to feel far away from God. In a way, in any relationship, there's times of feeling close and times of feeling distant. On April the 3rd, in just over two weeks' time, Emily, my wife, and I, we will be celebrating our 20th wedding anniversary. <laughs> I know, I don't, I don't look old enough to be married for 20 years. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> You're all thinking, yes, you do. <laughs> Throughout those amazing 20 years of marriage, I can think of a, a couple of occasions, or maybe, maybe once, perhaps twice, when actually Emily and I have ended up having a massive, massive row. In fact, there's been a lot more times than once or twice. But you know... I have to say, I honestly hate those times. When I think back on those times, to, to be quite frank, I often can't even remember, particularly whilst we were, while we were arguing in the first place. But I can find myself feeling so distant from her. This distance and separation is created between the two of us, and it's absolutely horrible. I wanna do anything I can to try and bring that relationship back together. But what I've realized over that time is that often we're only just one conversation away from restoring that closeness again. Usually it's when Emily says sorry, <laughs> comes to her senses, no, that's completely not true. Um, it's me saying sorry, I think, all the time. Lady nodding on the front row here. Chocolates, flowers chores, 
There's a lot of chores to do when you're asking for forgiveness. <laughs> you know, it's the same uh, in our relationship with God. In this passage, Jonah finds himself at an all-time low. He's seemingly so far away from God that he just can't make his way back. He's as far away as you could possibly get. Right at the start of this story, we read that Jonah has been on this sort of descending journey. He's been on this downward spiral into the depths of despair. In chapter one, it says that he goes down to Joppa. Then he goes down into the cabin of the ship. And then, of course, he's thrown down into the depths of the ocean. It says in our passage today, he sank down to the very roots of the mountains. You see, Jonah was down, but he wasn't out. It says in verse 17, but the Lord provided and God saved Jonah. That was what God did for Jonah. But what did Jonah do? What must we do when we are feeling far away from God, when we find ourselves seemingly distant from God in some way? Here's four very quick things. First of all, speak honestly. Jonah was in the belly of the whale. No father could he fall, and yet he chooses to have an honest time of reflection, and he prays. It says in verses one and two, from inside the fish, Jonah prayed. He said, in my distress, I called to the Lord. From the depth of the grave, I called for help. You see, whatever you are facing today, whatever struggles you might be looking at in your life, Take time to be honest with God. Can I encourage you to cry out to him? It says here that God listened and answered his cry. It's the same for us. When we speak to God, he listens, he hears us, and he answers our prayers. We need to speak honestly with God. Also, we need to speak honestly with one another. Sometimes when we're at the lowest points in our lives, God answers our prayers through other people. For a number of years, um, I've really battled with chronic migraines, probably for over a decade now. And then about 18 months ago, I would say I probably had one of the hardest uh, times as I was struggling with that. And it was a really, really low point. And... I would say that the physical symptoms had kind of become so, so bad, it was preventing me from doing other stuff that I enjoyed doing, and particularly sort of running or exercise, those things that I wanted to do to kind of de-stress or decompress. And I felt like my sort of stress levels were rising. As a father of four sons, three teenage boys, busy job, uh, life in London, pretty standard, I'm sure, for all of you, loads of things uh, going on. And yet, in those moments, I felt like, Life was kind of just really, really beginning to get on top of me. And these headaches were just agony, to be quite honest. And I'm not proud of this, but there were definitely days when I sort of thought, if I just, if I just step out in front of that bus, maybe just this gnawing in my head would just go away. And just a couple of things that I was going through at the time, I had to go in for an operation for something else, and just... This anxiety, it was like this health anxiety started to rise up uh, in me. And, you, you know, I think it took quite a while, actually, even for me to go to Emily and say, do you know what? This is really what's happening inside. This is what I'm, I'm feeling. And she, she sort of looked at me and she said, you know, that's not great, is it? And I thought, that is a complete understatement. Actually, we ended up, we went to the doctors together and got a little bit of medication. And do you know, since that time, I just feel like I've been able to climb up out of that hole over these last sort of 12 months. Things have got so much better. You, you probably wouldn't have noticed, but the exercise has come back. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it just, just beginning to feel like I can do life a bit more, the stuff, the demands uh, that are upon us. You know, all of that happened through, firstly, speaking honestly with God. 
and then speaking honestly with other people. And if you're here today and you're struggling in some way with something, can I encourage you, speak honestly with God. Cry out to Him. He's listening. He will answer your prayers, but also speak honestly with somebody else, maybe a friend, a connect group leader, a family member, maybe one of the team or the clergy here. So that's the first thing. When we feel far away from God, speak honestly. Secondly, focus intently. Despite his surroundings in the belly of a whale, rather than focusing on just the darkness and the challenge of his situation, Jonah looked to God. In verse four, it says, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again. Jonah chooses to focus on God again, on who he is, on his, his character. And when we're feeling far away from God, that's what we need to do. In fact, that's what we do when we worship. Isn't it just amazing just to worship in that way, to, to refocus our gaze on who he is, on his character, that he's good, that he's kind, he's loving, he's forgiving, he's slow to anger, abounding in love, that he's in control, that he's got a plan and a purpose for each one of our lives, that he can save and rescue us. I love what uh, Louis Giglio, the American pastor, he says in his book, Goliath Must Fall. He says, worship is simply a shift of attention. Shifting our attention allows us to see God better. Worship is like corrective lenses for our souls, bringing God clearer into view. That's important for all of us, especially when life goes off the rails. Worship puts God in focus. You see, whatever it is we might be going through, whatever mistakes we might have made, however far away we might be feeling from God, God is calling us home. And as we worship it's like we sung, you know, this is how we fight our battles. It's in the worship that God comes and meets with us. However far you may have fallen, you can never fall too far for God to reach out and to catch you. There's no place too dark, too deep where he can't find you. And in this passage, we find Jonah shouting out thanksgiving, worshiping, praising God in the midst of his suffering. He's not ignoring it, but he's choosing to focus intently on Jesus. So speak honestly, focus intently. Thirdly, trust completely. Jonah, as he sat there in the whale, where would he put his trust? all of the superficial things of his life had been taken away. And Jonah realizes that rather than putting his trust in God, he's been putting his trust in other things, maybe in his, his intellect, in his own decision-making, in his own plans for his life. And in a rare moment of self-awareness, Jonah says, those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. You know, that's a challenge for all of us. Where do we put our trust? There are so many things in life that fight for our attention and our time and affection. Like that seaweed that was wrapping around Jonah's head. In our culture today, so many things reach out for us. Where do we find our identity? Where do we put our trust? Maybe we put it in our salary or a paycheck. Maybe it's in our, our latest phone that we have or the gadgets that we have. Maybe on the number of followers we have on Instagram or Twitter. Maybe in the clothes we wear, the people that we socialize with. Whatever it is, if we're not careful, these things can suffocate our relationship with God. They can bring distance between us. Our passion for Him can fade. We can find ourselves stuck in our spiritual journey. But like here with Jonah, sometimes it's only when you reach the very bottom, when everything else is taken away, that we again become completely dependent on God. As it's often said, we don't realize that Jesus is all we need until Jesus is all we have. In everything, 
God wants us to learn to trust Him completely. I know that I can find this so hard, particularly in some of the big decisions, maybe when you're looking for guidance in your life. Uh, Emily and I, we moved to London in 2010, and in the first five years of living in London, we were required to move four times, which is no small thing with four kids and all the stuff that comes along with that. And the last time we found out that we had to move, I can remember just my heart sank. The email from the landlord came through, and I just remember looking at it, sort of putting my head in my hands and thinking, God, why does this have to happen? Surely not again. And as we were processing all of that, Emily one day, she went out for a walk, I think she was going to the local shops, and as she was walking, she was praying. And similarly, she was just saying, oh God, why did this have to happen again? You know, all the upheaval, all the stress, all the kind of logistics and administration and everything that goes along with that, not to mention the kids, la, 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 la. And as she was pouring out her heart to God, she just felt God say, it's just around the corner. And she carried on walking, and just as she walked around the corner, she saw two workmen, two construction men, walking around with a great big sign, a hoarding uh, for a job that they were doing on some renovations to a local house. And uh, when Emily came back and told me this story, I went back and I took a photo of it, and this was the name of their company. That's not actually the house that we ended up moving into. But in that moment, God was saying, trust me, I am able. We actually did move to a house that was just around the corner. It was actually number 139, Emily's favorite psalm. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. See, God wants us to learn to trust him completely. And if you're struggling today, the Psalms is a great companion. Yesterday in the Bible in one year, the promise is I will deliver you from all your troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He saves those who are crushed in spirit. You know, never doubt in the dark what God has spoken to you in the light. So when we feel far away from God, what do we do? We speak honestly, we focus intently, we trust completely, and finally we remember daily. Jonah takes time in the midst of his difficult circumstances to remember what God has done for him. In verses six and seven, it says, you brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you. However far you might be feeling away from God today, there is hope. You know, in many ways, Jonah's story is all of our stories. Not so much in the circumstances and the events of his life or in his personality traits, but in the fact that at one time we were all separated, distant from God. We all needed God's grace like Jonah, unable to save ourselves, seemingly with no hope of rescue, no hope of a second chance. But like in this story, God provided. He came through with a rescue plan, not in the form of a fish, but in the form of a man. God sent Jesus Christ to rescue us. Paul says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Jesus. And on the cross, as Jesus died, darkness fell, and he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus himself experienced what it meant to be far away from God so that we don't have to. 
He was separated from his Father in heaven so that we might come close to our Father in heaven. That's the good news. That is the message of the Christian gospel. This is the message of hope that we have. Whatever we're feeling, whatever we're experiencing, to tell to our friends, our families, our neighbors, our communities, to speak to this city. However hard life might seem, however far away we may have turned from God's ways, he runs to us. He is close to us because of what Jesus has done. As we come to communion now, let's take time again to speak honestly with God, to focus on him intently to trust in him completely and to remember what he has done for each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen.